Hello, give me one quick second, getting everything turned on here, there we go, okay. And there we go, hi everybody, welcome back to Bless This Mess, uh, today's video is coming from a live stream. From Twitch, if you would like, you can follow me over uh, twitch.tv slash bless this mess, just like it's spelled here with two S's and then this. Today, we are playing uh, episode two of Tell Me Why. Last episode, oh gosh, what happened last episode? Um, oh, right. So we discovered that Allison actually was the murderer of the mom. Holy cow. That kind of slapped me in the face. Some people saw that coming. I... I didn't. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff I didn't see coming. Um, but we found out that Allison actually uh, kind of saved Tyler's life. We also learned that there's kind of some supernatural stuff going on. The Mad Hunter is likely involved in what's going on. But as far as how deep, we're not sure. Um, and so, yeah, that's, a, that's pretty much all the important stuff. So today we're going to be playing through episode two. I'm hoping to go all the way through the episode. I've seen uh, some people say it took them about four hours to get through. So... I don't know, we'll see how my energy goes. I might break up into two parts. Uh, but yeah, if you missed me here on Twitch, you can definitely find the upload on YouTube. Uh, it's Bless This Mess over there as well. So uh, let's just get into it. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins. One quick sec. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the crafty goblins did everything together until one day when darkness overwhelmed the big wooden house in which they lived. Blamed for the darkness, Brother Goblin was forced to leave the forest while his sister had to stay behind. Ten years later, they were finally reunited, and together, they decided to confront the darkness in the big wooden house. Though they sought the help of their friends in the forest, they found that no one wanted to delve into the long-gone past. This is how the goblins found themselves alone in the woods trying to discover why darkness had submerged the big wooden house. Ooh, the Mad Hunter smiles kind of, kind of reminds me of like the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. <clears throat> That's the night, the night it all happened. Tomorrow we should play Compass and North Star in the woods. Be sure to wear your hat then. <laughs> you be sure to wear your hat. <laughs> All right, who wants ice cream? Me! Eat up. That's a lot of ice cream. <laughs> That's like three giant scoops, holy cow. Without a word. She went out and buried the tiara in the ground beneath the sapling. And as the final scoop of dirt fell, 
the tiara felt truly gone, and with it, the final link to her old self. She could only go forward and find a new place for herself in this world, where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a wan woman, alone in a deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure. And her title. I don't like that story. <laughs> there were no goblins, and it was depressing. We won't read it again. I love you, Mom. I have Not no you. doubt at this point that the princess is <laughs> the Just mom. Just kidding. <laughs> love you, Mom. Like, she's telling her own I story through these stories. Like, there's no question in my mind. Sleep well and dream, my doves. It's wild how these scenes portray her as like this loving mom and yet as grown-ups they look back on it and see her as Ollie? this complete monster. It's very strange. Ollie. Ah, she spies ice cream. <laughs> I'm surprised she still needs more. What a waste. <laughs> Allison! Ollie! Allison, help! Oh, the voice. That makes sense. cow wow that's wild I can't imagine the trauma she had to work through <laughs> just up until her teen years I mean forget now <laughs> oh, this music is so awesome it's like so retro and cool <laughs> done this so well the way that like their present and their past kind of just weave in with each other it's almost like they're playing with the memories of their of their past while reuniting with their present like <laughs> this is just so incredibly well done I'm so tickled by this <laughs>
I'm totally digging the soundtrack, not gonna lie. I <laughs> love it. Totally love it. Hey. You doing all right? I thought coming here would be closing a chapter of our lives, you know? And instead we spun off a whole miserable prequel trilogy. <laughs> Okay. No. We're not letting ourselves do this again. Come on. Up. My numbing labor's a great way to forget your troubles. Uh, can't we just have coffee instead? No. <gasps> On your coffee feet, soldier. Sounds good. <laughs> I want coffee. I just got off work. <laughs> Let's take a break from packing and sort out the furniture. Mm. If we get enough done, I'll drive you into town and buy you a gallon of ice cream. Mint chocolate chip, two gallons. Let's do this. <laughs> hmm. I guess her whole room is Goblin garbage. fish is keep. Dollar sign is donate or sell. And trash can is, well, trash. By the way, I cleared out most of the stuff in the bathroom this morning, but I left you the toilet. How oh. very generous of you. How nice, thanks. Okay, so I guess we get to go through and pick things that we want to keep and things that we want to get rid of. <laughs> I completely forgot we had a pet vole for a few days. Poor it's a vole. Female. She was in rough shape when we found her. Good thing Marianne actually knew what she was doing with injured wildlife. Look under. Ooh, collectible. What's this doing down here? Is that gum? Hmm. <laughs> uh, I guess that was probably me. Goblins were here. That's cute. Okay. Uh, but what about the table? Should we? Ooh, a memory. Okay. Ah, here we are. your salad first. Thank you, Tessa. You're a lifesaver. Oh, don't worry about it. They're just leftovers from the restaurant. What about Volcano? She needs to eat her lunch, too. I need to Google what a vole is, because I don't my even bad, know. Uh, she can have my corn. <laughs> Here you go, little one. Vole. You must be hungry, too. <laughs> uh, it's just a rodent. Tessa really did keep us all fed. She always tried to take care of everyone. Still does, I guess. Voles are small rodents that are relatives of le relatives of lemmings and hamsters. So I guess it's just some kind of tiny mammal <laughs> that fits in a cage or an aquarium. Uh, let's take what a look to at the do table. With this? Keep, trash, sell. I'm inclined to keep. I feel like they have a lot of good memories there. Tables are expensive. And besides, this one's an Allison and Tyler original. Oh, I already looked under. Okay, cool. Um, let's take a look at stuff in here. Uh, I guess we're just doing furniture. What about this couch? No? Ugh, gross stain is gross. Uh, what <laughs> happened? Some unfortunate spillage that brought about the end of indoor tea parties. I hid the stain with my toys, forgetting that they would eventually be picked up. Brilliant move, Ronan. Uh, you were no better, I was scared. Uh, you were no better, probably. Well, I seem to recall a time you stole an egg, put it on the couch, and sat on it because you wanted a pet chicken. <laughs> we don't talk about that. Uh-huh. Well, at least I didn't leave a stain. Hmm. Crummy table and wobbly chairs. Um, keep trash cell. You could probably make some money on it for someone who's kind of handy. We could make some pretty good money if we sell this. And I know I'd end up eating on the couch most of the time anyway. Cool. Oh. Oh, God. That's... What's that smell? <laughs> oh, what's that smell? 
<laughs> You're doing a great job. Uh, what did thanks. I put on him? I think I put a goblin on him. Good. We're keeping him. <laughs> oh, what's that smell? Smells like delicious garbage. Um, Ooh, yes. Makes sense. It smells indeed. trigger memory. <laughs> or could it be Stinky Pants Sam? <laughs> oh, Stinky Pants Sam! <laughs> Come on now. Sam got that smell getting a skunk out of our barn. Be nice. <gasps> a skunk? What did you do to her? Is she okay? <laughs> sure is. She just went hunting for food and couldn't get back out. Went hunting? All she needed was a <laughs> little nudge to get her on her way. Sam Kansky. Hero of skunk kind. I remember being super impressed by him. And it made me want to be a wild animal superhero too. Hmm. It's good that he left that kind of impression, you know? Ancient appliances, you are staying here. Although, that oven looks in okay enough shape. No way. We are not moving the oven. Honestly, it's a good selling point. If somebody has to buy appliances in order to buy a house, they're less likely probably to, to get it. Uh, he said he already went through the bathroom, but I'm curious. I want to do a little snooping. Thanks for clearing out those cabinets. Not my pleasure. Smell? Oh, ew, ew, ew. Raven Sarah. Oh, God. I can still taste it. Put it away. <laughs> <laughs> Say, ah. Uh, I remember cutting off shaving cream beards with these. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Uh, let's see what's in here. What about that dresser? If you want your towels to rot, go for it. Fair enough. We could clean it up. I feel like they've got enough on their plate. Fair enough. Junkyard. Yeah, I mean, you got the wobbly table and stuff. And you've already got to clean out this enormous house. So you might as well just limit how much work you have to do, you know? I think we've already seen that picture. Um, let's see if there's anything in the washroom. Hello, ancient broken down machines. That will be the future owner's problem. <laughs> Place sticky notes. Allison, I asked you to clean up the coffee table three times already. You <sighs> so did not. Yes. I forgot. You freaking told me to put sticky notes on furniture. Like, calm down. Everywhere I look, there's just stuff, stuff. And more stuff. Mary and the magpie. Isn't a magpie like a raven? Are, are ravens uh, known hoarders? All right, I guess I'll clean off your coffee table since you're gonna be so demanding. All right, I'll clean it up. Thanks. While you do that, I'll check out the furniture. I'm mm -hmm. guessing you want to keep the coffee table? Uh, yes. What about you? Uh, let's see if he wants to keep it. If there's anything you want, speak now. I'm not really planning on bringing furniture to Denali. And if I need a base in Juno, you'll have all the furniture I need. How very non-committal of you. All right. <laughs> I'll keep it. Cool. That's settled. <clears throat> mm. I really like that armchair. Uh, for your forest check, uh, you like the mold smell? <laughs> uh, you like the mold smell. Maybe sit in it for a few minutes and see if you get used to the mold smell first. Uh, on second thought, never mind. Hmm, keep trash. Let's trash it. Another one for the landfill. Oh my god, I used to have one of those. I also had one of those chickens that you like squeeze it and it makes like a, a weird chickeny and sound. Finally. You can hit people with it. <laughs> I hate to say it, but the couches get a one way ticket to the dump. No protest here. Agreed. I think I have permanent knee damage from a decade of bumping into the corner of those damn things. How do well, I get up? And that's it for the living room. Oh. You are relieved from your duties. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> Um, what else shall we look at? Uh, let's go here. What's up? Should I throw these pictures out? I don't want them. They're happy memories. Uh, they're happy memories. I mean, 
Most of them are pretty happy memories. I guess. You look cute here. That's not me. I mean, it is, but... Uh, don't worry, I get it, but what? Uh, we get, we get it. It's a different you. But not really. I get it. It's just weird. Seeing myself like that again. Damn. I didn't think a picture could throw me like this Aww, anymore. Oh, cute. Did therapy help? I'm sorry about that. Um, let's see if uh, therapy helped a little. Has therapy helped at all? Oh, yeah, definitely. My therapist really heard me when I said I was a guy. And she helped me get ready for the reactions I'd get, you know? It's dealing with other people that's been way harder than figuring myself out. At the end of the day, being able to look in the mirror and see Tyler, that's made the biggest difference. Which is why I'm scheduling my top surgery as soon as we sell this house. Mm -hmm. No more putting a binder on every morning. God, that sounds fucking amazing. Yeah. I've heard those are totally. very painful, Just or can be. No. I'll be there to help out when you do. Whatever you need. <laughs> Thanks. All right. What's your verdict, Ronan? You know what? I'll keep a few. To remind us how far we've come. Good. Give me one quick second. I forgot to share. Um, I forgot to share that I'm streaming. <laughs> uh, episode two. If anyone wants to hang. Um, Twitch dot TV slash bless this mess okay cool that's done now big back to our regularly scheduled program sorry about that folks um okay oh man i love this one why do I look so pissed? I remember loving this. Maybe because Marianne was sticking a camera in your face? Come on, smile. Like Alex. Is it another memory? Oops, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> uh, maybe I gotta get closer. There we go. Come on, honey, smile. Like Allison. Is that Sam? It's not my fish anymore. Allison stole it. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> she just goes. My sister, the fish thief. <laughs> you were just being bratty. Was I though? Yes. All I did was help clean it when we were out on the porch. Eddie had to force you to share. Oh, I wonder if there's anything over here. Mm. Oh, there it is. Hey, now. Take your time. He's not gonna jump up and do the cha-cha. What about me? I want to clean the fish too. Ew! It's not even your never. fish. Never. You didn't catch anything. Ugh. <laughs> Only because you wouldn't stop talking and scared all the fish away. Keep your eyes on what you're doing. Allison, when we're done with this half, you can take over and do the other one. That sound fair? Yes. Mm -mm. You're right. I was kind of being a brat. Hey, kind Allison, of, yeah. come take a break with me. Oh my God, he's so demanding. Allison, do this. Allison, do that. <laughs> That's a nice face. I wonder if my horse figurine is still in there. Uh, you're what now? You are welcome to check. Let's get the story behind the horse You're figurine. Now? You know, my blue toy horse. With the kind of melted face. The one you stole from me. What? That never happened. Yeah, it did. I won it at that little Halloween carnival they had at the school every year. You grabbed it and hid it in the pot. Then when I tried to get it back, you said there was a snake inside too. A uh, liar, whatever you say. Uh, let's just go along with it. Pick your battles, right? <laughs> whatever you say, horse face. We have the same face. Hey, clean free. Starting the fire again? Yeah, I'm gonna boil some water. You want something to drink? Ooh. Uh, choose coffee, choose tea. Oh, 
Tea sounds good. Earl Grey. I may take a break in a little bit and go get some tea because that sounds nice. I'm fixing myself a good old cup of joe. Ah, a nice pot of wakey wakey juice. Papa needs his rocket fuel. <sighs> I am so glad Eddie came through on the caffeine. Shh, did you hear that? <gasps> the Ice King is sending us a warning. Where is the Ice King? What? The hell's going on with those geese? Oh, maybe it's just background noise? Like the planes? Oh, we're almost right on top of it. <laughs> For your punishment, said the Ice King, you shall be banished from the forest. And if you dare come back before the new moon, you shall feel my anger in your gut. Hear it in the wind. Whoosh! <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the Ice King would really react that way? He may be intimidating, but he's always fair and never mean. Oh, yeah. You're right. Maybe he tells the goblins to help the people they hurt instead? Great idea, sweetie. Why don't we think about it at dinner? I'll put everything away for safekeeping while you go wash your hands. Can you put them in the binder so they don't get stained? Of course, love. <sighs> I still think my dark and twisty version was better. We put so many hours into that book. Yeah. Our binder was full of extra drawings and incomplete stories. I think they're all still in the kitchen drawer. We should go take a look. Sounds good to me. Um, which drawer though? What is that? Oh, that's a cookbook. Ooh, dump cake. Dump cake's hey, good. Allison, let's look at our drawings. Oh, that drawer. All they said was like kitchen drawer. Allison's My first bad. drafts. Right. Because I didn't contribute at all. Come on. I know you did. I can't believe she kept all these. <laughs> You'd think putting them on the fridge for a couple of weeks would have been enough. You know how we thought of ourselves as the goblins? Did you ever get the sense that maybe Marianne was the princess in the stories? That's what uh, I said. Yeah. She called her bedroom the princess's sanctum, and I called she it. was all alone <laughs> in the woods, in this house, until we showed up. She was. Alone, but with a few friends who helped her along the way. What are you doing? Hmm, so people were right. So, if Marianne was the princess, then who were all the rest? And here we go. Oh, come on. Humor me. I've heard people saying that each of the characters in the stories represent somebody in their real life. Uh, I guess they were right, so good good job. <clears throat> so I guess we're supposed to match up the personalities of the characters with the people, and we've got Tessa, Sam, and uh, I guess it's Eddie, Chief Brown. Uh, Sam, Sam is definitely the bear. He's the one who's been like protecting the property. So I definitely think that's Sam. Um, the pelican, the pelican had like the never emptying uh, beak or whatever. And that's definitely gotta be Tessa. Cause she's like, she's always giving them like food and laundry soap and mm. whatever they needed. Pelican. She was the most generous one. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But there was always a catch. Yeah, I definitely think that's her. You so done? how do I move these? Oh, I see. Swap. Okay. So let's you swap these two. Go here. I feel pretty good about that. Yeah. So. Ah, here we go. All right. I think I'm done. You sure? Mmm. Definitely on second thought. I'm pretty sure. How do you pretty like them sure. apples? You know, I think you might be onto something. What about these guys? <laughs> I don't see them being real life people. Or this one. Which ones? Oh, these over here. Yep. Totally Marianne. Why a princess, though? Mm -hmm. Why not a queen? 
She hated authority. Yeah, she'd have been a terrible ruler. Hmm, maybe, yeah, she seemed kind of bipolar. Or at least unstable. The Mad Hunter. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not drawing the connection on who would be the Mad Hunter in their real world. The specific human attributes you have assigned to these forest animals are truly thought-provoking. Indubitably. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, another memory. You better hurry or the Mad Hunter will catch us! We need to hide. This way! <gasps> what's... what's going on? I... I don't know. I, is he here? Yo. Is he really here? Uh, I'm scared. Go away! Oh, I do yeah. not like this. Go back to the forest! <laughs> ah, I got the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> Does he see the present day them? I forgot about that. We've been pretending he was there. And then... Suddenly he was. That was the only time that happened, right? That was weird. Allison. Wait. It felt way too real. It mm. was... Us. Pushing our imagination way too far. Mm. Great. Whoa. Sam Kansky, Grandmaster of Bad Timing. We're not done with this conversation. Morning, Sam. Well, hi, goblins. <laughs> I ran into Chief Brown, who said you were starting to clean up on the house this morning, so, uh... I kind of figured you might need some supplies. That's thoughtful. That's... Thank you. That was very thoughtful. Yep. Oh, uh, also got something for you, Tyler. Every man needs a good knife. That's there cool. Thanks. Aw, Sam. Oh, Sam. Good. What a good guy. Good, yeah. Oh, and before I forget, for the lady of the house. Oh, for me? Thank you. It was your mom's favorite recipe. Still make it darn near every week. Think of her every time. Uh, can can I just say, not every woman uh, cooks. We don't have a stove. <laughs> Still no electricity. Almost like oh, a horror yeah. game. Yeah, kind of a little bit. Busted. <laughs> Skirting on the edge for me. Just another thing I've been meaning to put back together around here. Where is it? I can take care of it. Oh, I don't doubt you can. But uh, I've been kicking this thing back to life for the last twenty some years. I'll give you a hand. All right. <laughs> Boxes look. in the barn. Follow me. <laughs> we'll like, be right behind you. Okay. I appreciate the effort he's putting in here, but like, not every woman cooks, you know? Just like not every man is handy. Uh, but I appreciate that he's trying, so thank you, Sam. <laughs> well, I guess old bears can learn new tricks. <laughs> yep. Come on. Let's go get our electricity back on. So I guess, do we still have the key from earlier when we go in this front door? So, nope. um, okay. how's school? I graduated already. Do outdoor I need to studies. get the key from the oh, frog again? Outdoor studies, huh? Well, it's a good thing I came along when I did. You know, I okay. built this here barn for your mama. Did she ask you to? Oh, <laughs> no. Not really. I mean, she talked about scraping together money to hire somebody, but I couldn't let her do that. Anyways, uh, let me find that darn key. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, you still have our keys? Just open the door. Uh, just open the door. We got stuff to do. <sighs> just open the door. And give us our keys. All of them. Well, I, uh, figured I might still need to do some maintenance, so, uh... Nope. We're good. Thank you. Well done, Fair Tyler. Warning. Door's a bit temperamental. <laughs> Haven't you been taking care of this place? You didn't oil the doors? What? 
You think I just hang out here all day or something? Here, son, give me a try. Good. Okay, when you twist it as far as you can to the left, give it a nice little jerk. <clears throat> Damn it. No oh, shit. Well, at least we got it open. Shall we go in? Well, at least the door is open now. <laughs> That's what I just said. <laughs> yeah. That's easy to fix. Can I do a little now, snoopy snoop? Fuse box. Oh no. no, no, no. You and you are going to clean up your mess. I'll take care of the fuse box. Wait, but I didn't I agree didn't to this. It. I'm not asking. Go on. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. Well, just go into plugs. Here we go. Should be easy enough. Uh, I see some instructions. So let's look at those. Uh, a dryer, water heater, oh. kitchen outlet lights, look generator, like heater, garage. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Ah, okay. That part down. You could refinish the whole thing, but. And it looks like we've got fuses on the upper right corner. Thirty. 20 and 15 volt, I guess. Is that what you measure them in? Amp. Okay. Um, he says, Marianne, I wrapped up your electrical board. I gotta run, but in case you want to check it out, careful not to overload the circuits. You'll have to use 15 amp fuses for the garage. Amps total up to 120 for the whole house. Sam. P.S. Pretty proud of myself once I respected the right color coding. Each Rick fuse should ball. have the right color cable. Football and college. Okay. Let's damn pull back around. No. So like it looks like that says 15, right. and that's blue. Right. And I see another blue cable here. Do I only get one of each? Let's try this one. And then we've got three yellows. Three yellows and a red. Does that total 120? No shit. Uh, let's covered in rust. Nothing a little salt and lime can't fix. What color is 20? It's a door latch. 20 is yellow. Okay. So then that must mean that 30 goes here. A margarita right about now. A margarita? Yeah, thirties really? red. Right. So Does old Sam like to feel fancy? Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Uh thirty goes here. And then twenty goes here. Cause it's yellow. And then that one's yellow. And that one's yellow. Is that 120? So we got uh no, twenty, forty, sixty. Shouldn't plus 30 is 90, plus another 30 is 120. Together. So that should be it. Hmm? Seems good. Yeah. I'm a pro. I'm a master electrician. Someone hire me. <laughs> hmm. I wonder, did Sam you give her the gun? Fool. Everything okay? You, uh, you two look like you got this all in hand, so, um. Bye. Hmm. I sense a story. What was that about? Can I not answer him? Okay. Huh, look at this. I think this is where she made all her toys. Hey, cool. She was so crafty. So she's making she the collectibles draw, that we're catching. Write, and take pictures. She could have been an artist instead of just locking herself up out here. Hmm. Toilet paper tubes, rope, cardboard. I wonder what she planned to make with that. Necklace. Maybe a car. Ooh, or a tank. Uh, yeah, could be. 
think they'd need like buttons and stuff. Oh, cute. This board's got all of the characters. Uh, I see the moose, the frog. There's the pelican. There's the bag of coins. The bear. That's cool. And is that like a fairy yeah, that's in the middle? Fun. Really? I hate spiders. And do I have to pick one? I hate spiders. If we end up living together, you should know my house has a no spiders rule. Well, in my house, we don't kill them. <laughs> Ugh. You can take them outside then. Preda rep. What's that? Wolf pee. Ew, what? Do uh, spill it on you. To keep smaller animals away, I think. I sense a story here. What's it doing here? Uh, I want to hear the story. <laughs> I sense a story. Well, if by story you mean using it at fireweed to get rid of some rats, and then spilling it on my only pair of shoes, then yes. <laughs> hey, it was not funny. Sure thing, B-Boy. Sounds funny. Oh man, I'm gonna put together the sweetest toolbox ever. I wonder why Sam got so upset. Oh, he probably forgot he was all out of bourbon. That's not cool. Something got to him. Uh, something got to him. Well, something about it really got to him. I don't think any of us are exactly happy to see that gun rack. Uh, remind me to take it down later. Will do, Captain. Did I get all of the... Oh, no, I didn't. What are we going to do with this rack? Take it apart and sell the scrap? Be my guest? It's a waste of time. Eh, well, if he wants to handle that. Be my guest. Yeah. It sure looks like a pile of junk to me. Where you see junk, I see dollars. Allison, do you know who this is? Who? What did you find? Do you know who that is? Uh, yeah. That's Carol, Eddie's mom. I've seen other pictures of her, but never this one. Man, look at Brown. And Marianne. She looks really happy. Can I? Careful, the glass is Ow. broken. He just said, be careful. Are you okay? It stings. Let's go see mom. But she'll get mad. We weren't even supposed to be here. Uh, there. Follow the memory. Okie doke. Come on, it's gonna get infected. I, I don't want to. She said not to disturb her and Eddie. Why? <laughs> Where are you going? Things were different when she was around. We were. Emily, Eddie, how could you do this to me? Hmm. Shh. Look, I had to make that call. Had to make a call, like a decision. What are you talking about? I can't figure out what's going on. I don't know. Or did he actually call somebody? I remember that whatever Eddie had to do, whatever that call was about, it was tearing him up. Tearing him up? He was being a total cop. And Marianne got pissed and threw him out. Here, I'm going to show you what I remember. There's more. I can feel it. Okay. There. I had to make that call. I was just following the law. Oh, yeah? And this little visit right here? What would the law say about this, huh? Look, I didn't have to come out here, but I did. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! Marianne. <sighs> I said get out! Out! Yikes. <clears throat> what? She didn't throw the picture at him. You sure about that? He was being a complete dick. How can you be sure? We were eavesdropping. We could barely see a thing. What do you think happened then? Oh, now I have to pick between our memories again? Um. Wait. Uh. Look. I had to make that call. I was following procedure. What I'm legally required to do. Then why are you here? 
pretty sure this isn't procedure. I wanted you to hear it from me. Please leave. Mary Ann. I'm sorry. Please just go. Hmm. How do we keep remembering the same thing so differently? It was a long yeah, time ago. Yeah, for real. Well, memory is a tricky thing. Wait, when did that happen? I, I'm not sure. I think it was the exact same day she attacked you. That's what I thought. But Uncle Eddie said he hadn't seen Marianne for weeks. Yeah, that was bullshit. And what was all that about following the law? What was he doing here exactly? Uh, he must have had reasons. I have no idea. Uh, he obviously had a reason, like... He must have had his reasons for not telling us. Look, yeah. I know he took care of you, but that doesn't make him incapable of lying. I can't see him being that cold with Marianne, even if he was being a cop. I mean, I can, but who knows? I guess memory is a tricky thing, huh? It is indeed. Oh, so this is where I have to pick. Choose Tyler's memory. Marianne was angry. Choose Allison's memory. Marianne was sad. Um, from what we know about Marianne, like in the house and, you know, their playful memories and stuff as children, she seems like a very caring, loving person. I, we haven't witnessed her like in an actual flashback ever being seriously angry or mean or apart from the night everything happened so i'm more inclined to believe her as a docile person so i think this time i'm gonna go with allison's memory i know you were just doing your job but i need you to go before you get in trouble please just get out of here All right. Say Brown really felt bad about whatever he came out to tell her. It was still the day she attacked us. He still lied. Now what? We go and get a straight answer from him. Yeah. Find out why he right didn't. Now? Yes. Tell the truth. I'll go get my car keys. But what will these mountains of trash do without us? Fuck the trash. <laughs> All right, she's a woman on a mission. believe Brown lied. I mean, I may not be the guy's biggest fan, but he's always talking about the truth and the law and shit. Do you have to be so happy about it? What? I know you've been waiting for something like this. Something that proves Eddie's an asshole. He but didn't quoting about it is give really me that impression. Cool. <sighs> it's Tina. I gotta take this. Yeah, j just a sec. I'm parking the car. Who's Tina? Hmm? I didn't get the impression from Tyler that he was necessarily happy about the fact that Eddie did something wrong. Like, I'll I didn't go stretch my legs then. read that about him. No, just give me a sec. Okay, Tina, what's going on? Hi, hon. I've got someone who is super interested in seeing the house. Oh, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Uh, when? They're just in the area for a couple of days, so they'd like to come by day after tomorrow. Ooh, oh, that's fast. Uh, I'm not sure it'll be ready. Hun, this guy is very motivated, but I know he's looking at other properties. And it's not like you've had people breaking down the door. I appreciate that, but we've kind of got a lot going on over here. Agreed. Did I mention it would be an all-cash offer? <laughs> Uh, let's do it. It's not the right time. I don't know. They're kind of in the middle of investigating their past. I feel like it's really not a good time. Like, they've got too much stuff to go through and too many unanswered questions. It's, it's not the right time. Yeah. Offer, I'm sorry, but it'll be a total mess. 
I don't want to waste anyone's time. Okay. Well, you tell me when you're ready. And I feel like if we <gasps> hurried well, up and sold the I house, think I just made Tina's shit list. Tyler would not. Um, Tyler wouldn't get what he's looking for as far as understanding his past. Like, I don't think it would be fair. Hey, what's this over here? A uh, caution sign. Uh, warning, bear encounters are frequent during Salmon Run. That's May through October. Exercise extreme caution along all rivers, local trails, viewpoints, and glacier roads. During autumn, bears move to higher elevations to feed on berries and den for the winter. Do not feed bears. Uh, keep all foods properly stowed and contained. Stay alert. Uh, learn to spot fish and game carcasses and scavengers. Make noise while hiking. Bears don't like surprises. Never hike alone. Always carry pepper spray when hiking. In case of an encounter, do not run, stand your ground, wave your arms, talk loudly. Do not climb trees or poles. Bears are extremely efficient climbers. In case of violent attack, fight back vigorously. Huh. <laughs> uh, I feel like the game is hinting at the possibility of a bear attack in the future. <laughs> um, yeah. We'll just have to kind of file that away. What do we have over here? D and I did that trail a couple years ago. We drank ice cold beers when we reached the summit. Oh, that sounds like fun. Eh, I don't think we need to look at this. Uh, let's see if we can find Tyler. Mm. Hero. Um, uh, nope. Okay. <clears throat> oh, cool. Somebody, like, carved a fox into a the tree trunk? really nailed this one. Dorian Oh, there's Key. Tyler. Kind of rings a bell. Hmm. Cute. Looks like you found a nice spot. We've been here before, right? Don't know. So, Tina? Tina West, our realtor. Oh, that Tina. What'd she need? She had someone who wanted to see the house, but he could only come by day after tomorrow. And you told her no? Yeah. We need more time than that you know, to get things cleaned up and, you know. Thanks. But what if it's the only call we get? And I guess we just scrolled and lose our minds in that fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. <sighs> so, before Tina called, we were talking? Yeah. I'm not happy your foster father fucked up. Oh yeah? Because you sure sounded he like it. He hid information about Marianne. I know! You just don't have to rub it in! I get it. Yeah, You're always gonna down. side with him over me. Come on, that's not fair. Then why do you keep doing it? This town, these people, they're just memories to you. But it's my home, Tyler. My friends, my family. And that as much as I want quickly. answers, I'd rather not lay waste to my entire life to get them. I didn't come here to ruin your life, Allison. I just want some answers. I know. That's why we're doing all this, right? Oh, a memory. Oh no, we're gonna talk using the voice. You're gonna suck all day. I like this view. Eddie warned me about this. Eh, Eddie warned me about this. Uncle Eddie warned me about this, but I didn't listen. Oh yeah? What did Uncle Eddie have to say? Never mind that we wouldn't get along. Uh, that we wouldn't get along. Just that we've led pretty different lives. We might not really see eye to eye like we used to. Ah, I see. Chief Brown said you shouldn't trust me, so you don't. That's Go not ahead. what I said. Is that what you think? You shut people out. Uh, is that what you think? Because that's not what I said. Oh, come on. I didn't say that. Is that really what you think? I don't know. It's just that ever since I got back, I felt like I was crashing your party. Well, that's all in your head, Ty. I'm not sure what else to say.
Can I get up? Hey, you feeling this? Oh, it is a memory. Okay. compass okay and don't cheat i know you were sending me fake hints last time i did not yes you did okay okay i won't do it again <laughs> you were always accusing me of cheating because you totally did <laughs> it was a cool game Guessing where you were just by feeling what you felt. Mm, that it, that does sound really cool. We looked like little freaks. No one else would uh, could play with us. Yeah, no one else could play with you. No one else could play it with us. That was the beauty of it. For real? You never wanted any other friends? No, nah, not really. I mean, we had each other. That was enough for me. So, not too disappointed I turned down our chance to be billionaires? Nah. All that money would have made me soft. <laughs> and I've spent way too many years polishing my edgy side. Hmm. You were right to call me out earlier. I was being a jerk about Eddie. I'm all for enjoying the wind. I still as they didn't come, see it. But maybe not at the expense of my father figure. I'll try my best. Well, at least we made peace again. I'm all about that. Hmm. I guess we can't go down there? I love the the fact that you can actually like see our footprints in the snow. That's really cool. I love it when snow does that. They're awfully quiet. They usually like have something to say. What you thinking? Where are you going? Hey, look what I found. Huh. It's a tree. Oh, a. Hey. Oh, Ollie Aha. and Alyssa. I knew it was still here. I knew we'd been here before. We claimed it as part of the Ronin Kingdom. And it still is. All it needs is a little update. What are you doing? What I wanted to do back then, but I didn't have the guts. I like the way they have snow in their hair. I want winter so bad. I'm so tired of summer. Texas sucks, man. <laughs> Looking better already. You're right. Way better. What did you do? Can I see? Ah. Does look good. Yay, Tyler. Oh, we're back here. Yay. So, what's the plan? We go inside and calmly ask Eddie why he was there that day. All right. Are both of you capable of calm? Let's I don't know. Let's let him get his side of the story out. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I understand, Mr. Barrow. I'll be sure to let him know. Yes, I have it all written down. Have a good day, Mr. Barrow. Morning, Missy. How do you get stuck working reception? Rose called in sick this morning. I'm covering for her while I try to get my paperwork done. What are you doing here? Just checking in with Uncle Eddie. I'm guessing from the identical features that this is Tyler? Tyler, Denise, Denise, Tyler. Nice to meet you. Can Wilson, we talk? Could you tell Officer Vincenzi that I'll be... Oh, good morning, Allison. 
Hi, Uncle. I'm gonna take Dr. Torres. Just gonna to ignore the fact that I'm standing here. No need for to come back to the <laughs> That's a little rude. <laughs> he doesn't seem like he's in the best of moods. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but he's been a little off all day. Good luck. Thanks. Ooh, I can talk Great. to you. Okay. He has an excuse to brush <coughs> us off. I'm sure he'll make time if we say. Hey, he speaks. How's Delos treating you so far? Mm, happy to see Allison. Can't wait to leave. Uh, let's stay positive. Happy to see Allison. It's been good to see Allison. <laughs> she's been talking nonstop about you lately. I know she's happy to have you here. Hey, been meaning to say, Allison showed us that article you wrote for the Juno Daily last year. You were spot on. The state needs to be giving way more money to youth centers. Fireweed was lucky to have you. Loved working with those kids. It was tough work. I should go. Uh, that's a little abrupt. Um, I loved working with those kids. Thanks. I spent a lot of time fighting for more outdoor activities. Made some enemies in the administration over that one. But the first time those kids summoned Mount Roberts, man, they were so proud. It felt great. I know exactly what you mean. I, um, volunteer sometimes with the JCE. You know, give lectures about police work, lead group talks when I can. What's the JCE? That's awesome. Do your, uh, do your colleagues know see you around? What's the JCE? JCE? You know, Juno Coalition for Equality. Oh. 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 Right. That's awesome. Do your colleagues know? Uh, it's awesome. Because it is. Wait, really? That's awesome. Yeah, and I don't mean to preach, but the kids in those groups, be it Fireweed or the JCE, they need people who really understand them. People who know where they're coming from and will fight for what they need. Anyways, sorry for the rant. Oh, hello, kids. Hello, middle-aged adult. Everything all right? Well, I guess that's the end of our convo. <laughs> Later. That's optimistic. It Mr. Feels Beaver. Like every time we clear out a drawer, two more just appear out of thin air. Huh. Yes, you got my sympathies. When we emptied Linda's parents' house, mm. I thought we'd have to rent a backhoe. How is Linda? I feel like I haven't seen her in months. Good. Yeah, she started working over at the high school as the librarian. Pay's not great, but she gets to see the kids every day, so. <laughs> I bet Brendan's thrilled. Can I poke around? Oh, yeah. Happy as any teenager who's got to spend extra time with his mom. Ooh, I can. Well, I'll... Oh, boy. Fire drills. Everybody's favorite way to slack off. Hey, is that hmm. your desk? Huh? I didn't think so. Hey. Move on. Right. Watch your tone, mister. <laughs> Sorry. Dr. Torres, you said your daughter was with you during the incident? Yes, so, I guess, shall we talk to Eddie? He seems a little busy, though. Can you give me her name and date of birth? Okay. This Isabella feels awkward. Henderson, July I don't like 16th, this. 2009. Morning, Chief Brown. Sorry to be rude. Good but morning, the game Tyler. wants me to be. Hey, could we talk to you in private? It's a little urgent. Can you excuse me for a second, Dr. Torres? What's going on, you two? Private. We had a few means more questions about our mother. Without other people. <laughs> Look, now's not the best time. Well, maybe we can come back later then? Excuse me. Come on. Okay. Guys, I'm understaffed today. I've got a receptionist out sick, an officer dealing with personal issues. I need to finish taking this woman's statement and I don't have time to chat right now. We were just hoping for some answers. Well, I don't know what more you think I'm going to say. I already told you everything. I need to get back to this complaint. Sorry, guys. when he's stubborn like that so what now not sure what else you expected <laughs> uh we will get the we truth will. ourselves we can't do much uh psh, shit let's do it do it ourselves well he's obviously not going to give us the truth so i say we go get it ourselves where do you think they'd stash her file i don't know archives the archive room mm -hmm. maybe eddie's office wait you're not seriously thinking of breaking and entering a police archive goddamn right i am dr torres <laughs> You said your daughter was with you during the incident? Yes, she was. I'll need her Can information Can I just, too. like, slip up there? Can you give me her name and date of birth? Okay. Isabella Henderson, July 16th, 2009. Hey! Yeah, I should have guessed it wasn't going to be that easy. Oh, uh, yeah. Everything's fine. We're just, uh... I was just telling Tyler where the upstairs bathroom is. Tyler, help me out here. Oh, uh, yeah. 
toilet emergency, lake water, you know, mother nature's juice cleanse. And there's a bathroom just past the break room, behind you. First door on your right. Forget it, Tyler. There's no way we're getting upstairs out in the open like this. It's too suspicious. There must be another way well, up. Well, give me there a minute. There was a fire drill notice on Vincenzi's desk. Are there any kind of fire exits? Oh my god. Why didn't I think of that? Lobby. Now. Lobby. Okay. Can we set off the fire alarm and get everybody out? Sup. Oh. Do the map. Okay. Alright. Let's see. Um <clears throat> you are here. So if we go out the main entrance. It looks like there's some a fire escape, or at least a flight of stairs. So maybe we can sneak in that door. Can't be that easy. <laughs> you now? Uh, gotta get going. Need to smoke. Actually, no. I think we should say I gotta smoke just in case we have to come back inside. It might be kind of weird. Yeah, I need to smoke. If we you show up after we said we were leaving. It gets harder the longer you do it. Yeah, I know. Okay. While you're at it, thanks for that. <laughs> your sister to stop too. All right, we'll we'll work on that. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think it said it was on the right. So we just go in this door? I mean, surely the door's locked. <laughs> there. Fire exit. It opens up to a staircase on the side of the building, but it'll definitely be locked from the inside. If one of us were to create right. a diversion, the other could slip upstairs and open the door. And since you're the troublemaker, okay. I nominate you as the one who make a scene. Wait, really? Got a better idea? Uh, yeah, you could do it because you'll probably get more grace than I will with Eddie. Aren't cops like trained to notice suspicious behavior? That too. I'm not exactly an amazing actor. Figure out something simple and commit. I have faith in you. Can it go around behind the building? Fire exits right behind me. Oh. Guess not. <laughs> okay. So I guess I don't have an out here. I'm gonna have to Was that red create the distraction. Shooting range now. Uh. Um, give me one second. I'm going to check something because I feel like my signal is not good. There we go. That's better. Sorry, guys. I was going around here. Uh, is that supposed to be Greg's? Oh, yeah. Well, no one knows for sure, but the resemblance is uncanny. Who's <laughs> the artist? Gold case. Mm. Um, so what kind of disturbance can I make? Uh, who's kooky enough to bike to work in sub-zero weather? That would be Vincenzi. He's got a bike for every season. Okay. He names him, too. Uh, what's this one called? Duncan Rocket. So I guess maybe we can set up the fire alarm inside. Um, where is there a fire alarm? I feel like that's a pretty big clue, you know? Oh, there's a fire alarm. Yeah, I don't think I can set that off without um, without him noticing. Mailbox bandit. Chief Brown and staff, this letter is to inquire on the mailbox bandit. It's been nine days and I still haven't had any mail. My granddaughter Madison is on her honeymoon at Great House Resort in Jamaica. 
Ricky does computer work. She said she would write, and you know Madison keeps her word. I've called every day for nine days, and every time Rose makes some kind of excuse. If this is because I didn't write the recommendation to her son, tell her that has nothing to do with her, her job or doing her job. Stealing my mail may not seem like much to you, but getting away with crime makes a criminal more bold. How soon before you are after the mailbox killer? <laughs> I, I remind you, we donate to the Policeman's Fund every year, and it isn't easy for us, but we do it because we believe in law enforcement unlike some others. <laughs> but if this is the type of service we can expect, perhaps the firefighters could use our support. <laughs> this sounds like an old lady. <laughs> Um, okay. I don't think this is really going to help us with our current mission, so let's just go ahead and exit. But that was funny. Mailbox bandit investigation. Confirm locations. Okay, so I guess it really is an ongoing investigation for them. That pile of paperwork? What about it? I could tip it over. Kind of messy, but... Sure. I mean, that could be cleaned up quickly enough. Let's find something else. If anything, he might, like, kick us out because we're just making a mess all the time. Uh... How come I cannot interact? There it goes. Guess I probably can trip the circuit breaker, but I could turn the lights on. Just... Go! Improvise! I don't think that would clear the room. Uh, but let's give it a try. Oh, oops. Tyler. Oh, we didn't need to clear the room. Okay. I, I thought we had to like get everybody to leave so we can go up the stairs. All right. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> what now? Turn right when you exit the station. Okay, I get it. I know what we're doing now. The staircase will... Yeah, I'm on it. There's winter air. Okay, I'm by the door. Come on. That makes so much more sense than my stupid idea. I would have gotten us caught by now. <laughs> Teamwork. Thanks, Allison. Uh, so I guess let's start in the office. Mm. How old is Brown? Thirty-eight. Oh, it's wow. pretty young. Graduated really young. Youngest yeah. officer to ever join the DCPD. If Eddie catches us in here, there's no turning back now. We should move quickly. Uh, I guess that's all of the officers in his precinct. Budgets with zero case files. Looks like this is where Brown keeps all his personal mail. Why is Brown on a first name basis with the director of Fireweed? Oh. What'd you find? It's an invoice. Eddie Brown, you'll find and close the final invoice for resident Tyler Ronan. The Fireweed administration would like to thank you for all of the support you've given us over the years. We knew Eddie pulled some strings to send you there, but that's a lot of money. Dang. More back doors and secret moves. Maybe he didn't want to make you uncomfortable. Well, now I feel like I'm in his debt. Three thousand two fifty-seven sixty. Is that for one month? That's crazy. Looks like he's working with the Office of Child Services on the case. None of our business. That's kind of old. That's from November of 2005. Why is that out? You applied to a summer drama program back in 2009? I did, but they rejected me. Michael and I were supposed to go together. He went, but I was stuck. I'm delighted to inform you that you've been accepted. Why? Well, uh, this letter says you got in. He just turned it down? I'm sorry, Allison. Shouldn't be surprised he's lied to me in the past. 
I would like to know why. Um, okay, I think we've got everything in this corner. Let us snoop you elsewhere. Finding anything? No. Brown really wants everyone to know what a fine, upstanding citizen he is, mm. doesn't he? He's a genuinely good person. And saying that here makes me feel even worse. <laughs> the police chief of Delos Crossing hosts charity events? Huh? Oh, yeah. The community social. He volunteered to help. And since he pretty much knows everyone, and more importantly, who's called the cops on who, he's in charge of the seating chart. Hey, Eddie. Uh, you'll find enclosed the invitation for the annual social. Uh, as usual, I've included a plus one on the chance that one day you'll use it. Cheers, Elliot. Well, aren't you just thoughtful? Mm, okay, just a flyer. Let's put the Vecchies next to... That's a seating chart. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be able to resist that either. Whoever wrote that, though, has really nice handwriting. Mm. There we go. Ooh, a collectible. The moose. Wait a minute. Uh, when we were at the table... Yeah, we said that Eddie was the moose, right? Huh. Hey, you. Hmm, interesting. And we found the pelican in the store for Tessa. What was the one that we found under the table? I can't remember. Hmm. Huh. The Dallas Police Force is getting a new officer. Finally. This guy has a record, and not a short one. Why is he even in the running? Shh. Eddie has a really hard time hiring people out here. I don't think he has a choice. There's always a choice. Armed robbery, April of 2014. Flight to avoid pr uh, prosecution, giving testimony. <coughs> Excuse me. Drug paraphernalia. Mm. Well, I mean, the armed robbery is kind of a problem. Former military. Uh, honorable discharge. Cool. All right, so. Ah, a computer. Yes. Seriously? You're gonna try to hack into his computer? Fuck We're yeah, I am. For information. And computers are basically information pinatas. <laughs> Don't hit your computers, folks. Um, wow. Brown looked at our file this morning. Wait, what? What does that mean? I don't I don't know. But there's a reference number. R68653. I feel like I should write that down. Uh pen and paper. All right, so we have R68653. That's our case number. All right, I feel like we're going to need that later. Uh, hi, Chief. Regarding your request this morning about the running case, uh, number R68653, it hasn't been digitized yet, so you can find the paper originals in the archives for other references about the case. Transcripts of phone calls have been taken out, but you can find the digitized calls through the appendix. Let me know if you need anything else. Okay. Huh. Tom invited Eddie over for dinner? Oh, yeah. Uh, he's been trying way too hard to get Eddie's endorsement. Does he? Support Tom? He preferred staying neutral. Smart. <laughs> Good morning, Chief Tessa, and I would love to have you over for dinner on Thursday night. And I know you cannot say no to her roasted salmon. Um, I didn't catch it myself, but it is this morning's catch. And please remember your presence is required Wednesday at 1300 hours. I need us all there, so speak now if you can attend. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, none of this is relevant to One of his emails our mentioned the archives. That's gotta be where our file is. Let's go. This is gonna be the Snoopy Snoop. Of all Snoopy Snoops. <laughs> okay. So I guess that's the archive. Can we... That says that we're on CCTV though. Should we be worried about that? Maybe? <clears throat> Please tell me you know what the code is. To the highly confidential police archive? Then how am I supposed to open the door? I spent hours playing next to this room. 
see people go inside all the time. The keypad does this little tune. Dum da dee do. <laughs> Seriously. Da, da, go on, try. Da, da. Um. So that's the last one. That's the highest one, probably. I don't think that's the right order. Let me listen one more time. How did that tune go again? Dum da -de -do. I'm pretty I'm sure sorry. one is the last I one. Dum da -de oh, Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you never told me you had perfect pitch. Shut up. Hmm. 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 Mm, so four. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was easy. You didn't even need my paper. I did go to music school, by the way. I played French horn. <laughs> uh, looks like they're finally going digital. Oh, that's right. I remember Eddie complaining about this. They're gonna have to resort everything. Great. They've digitized their closed files, but only the ones before 1990. Meaning? Meaning our file is still somewhere in those boxes. Perfect. A room of scattered case files and a half-done sorting system. Yep. Sounds like a good this time. This is going to be so fun for you. I'm going to go keep a lookout. <laughs> That's how I like to spend all my what? Friday nights. Why do I have to be the one stuck with box duty? Yeah, for real. She always ducks out. She did this at the house earlier. Like better excuse for being there. Reach out if you need anything. Episode one, when we were looking for keys to get into. Yeah, I wrote it down. Okay, good. Thank you. She says, "Okay." When we were looking for the keys to get into the barn or whatever, she was just following us around, and we were doing all the work. <laughs> I'm just like, can you go do something useful, please? Um. All right. So we're looking for R six eight six five three. Uh, oh five R six six oh eight two thousand five two thousand five oh eight oh six thirteen fourteen oh nine oh five. Hmm, this is gonna take a minute. Okay, what was it R six eight six five three? Did I pass it up, maybe? I feel like I missed it. Okay. Mm oh, wait a minute. Um, maybe it's got the year as a prefix, so maybe I should look for 05-R68. Let's try that. Um, 13. Uh, 05 dash R61. Aha. I bet you it's this one right here. Here we go. Yep. <laughs> My bad. Looks like a step by step record of the investigation. Well, don't mind if I do. A uh, chronological record investigation case number 68-653. At uh, 2235 hours, notified my partner, Officer Christian Holt, of the accident at 12 Cannery Road, Dallas Crossing, Alaska. White female identified as Mary Ann Ronan, DOB, blah, blah, blah. Uh, falling over deck into lake. Audio recorded tape number... Oh, I feel like I need to write that down, too. So we're going to do tape number... Three six three five nine, um, and three six three six zero. Okay, um, at twenty two fifty eight hours, Holt and I arrived at the scene, briefed by Patrol Officer J Chan, number five six two two of incident, and then at twenty three oh seven hours, located witnesses, minor name redacted Ronin, and minor's name redacted Ronin, DOB blah blah blah, children of Marianne Ronin. Couldn't get a statement from them as they were under distress. 
and shock, the children were taken under care of patrol officer. At 23.41 hours, coroner investigator uh, T. Dickens arrived at the scene, rolled prints of victim, uh, crime lab tech O. Tully at the scene, completed photographs uh, of scene and recovered on unlicensed Rassler 3121 shotgun. Hmm. Okay. Well, so far I'm not seeing anything we didn't Yeah, we kind of already knew all this. some other files and audio recordings, though. You might be able to look those up on the computer, even if our file hasn't been digitized yet. Kind of what I was thinking. Um, at 0230 or 0230 hours, coroner coroner took possession of body, cleared the scene. At uh, 104, interviewed children at the station stated that after Ronan's hair was cut short by sister Ronan, uh, Marianne Ronan threatened Tyler Ronan with a gun when uh, Allison. Ronan fled from, or Alyssa, not Allison. Is it Allison? Anyway, uh, when sister fled from her, she uh, pursued the children to the docks. Ronan stabbed Marianne Ronan, who was still threatening the child before falling into the water. Witnesses state they called 911 shortly after Brown. And then at uh, 6.30 in the morning, canvas crime scene did not recover a pair of scissors claimed by, um, I guess, Alyssa Ronan. Or Allison Ronan presented this case to District Attorney B. Cruz, charged Ronan with homicide case TA. I feel like I should write that down. Case number TA66585. Okay. <clears throat> so I guess now we go to the computer and see if we can find the two tapes and the case file. Easy peasy and lemon squeezy. Do I need a password or something, or did they just leave this unlocked? <laughs> they left it unlocked. Great. I don't know. Mary Ann Ronan, March first, two thousand five. Okay, so there's the crime report. Ooh, and the autopsy. So, um, crime report. That's storage 05-R61889. And then the autopsy report 05-R62766. So those are our next two documents. Let's go Reference hunting. 05-R62766. Okay. Um, that's 14... 05R66? Nope. Not the right one. I don't understand why they don't keep all the documents for the same case in the same place. <laughs> why are they all spread out between different boxes? That doesn't make sense to me. Uh, 2005-201, R43, 13, 14-9. We're looking for 62. There's 68, Mm, oh nine. Oh five miscellaneous. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. Oh eight. Mm, I feel like I missed it. R six two. Missed it somewhere. R61, R68, R63. Oh, it's in the same box. <laughs> Duh. I have her autopsy report. Ooh, I bet that would be hard to read. Yeah. What is it? She drowned. Stab wound was not fatal. What? So neither of them are guilty of her death, really. But if they knew that, why did they still send Tyler? to that residence. Um, autopsy, March 2nd, 05. 42 female DOA was uh, post-drowning. One stab wound left loin two degrees to assault sea scissors by daughter, blah, blah, blah. Bunch of technical jargon that probably a, a medical examiner would understand. Uh, 
Interesting. So if they knew that she died by drowning, why did why did they still I guess maybe that's why he didn't go to prison, was because she didn't die from the stab wound. Ooh, we have more criteria. Okay. Um so the crime report, I think I already got this document number. So I can cross this one off. Yeah, I have this one written down and then the court order, which is 05-R63325. <clears throat> um, okay, there's that. Here. Oh, incident report. Um, Bingo. 2005 dash two zero one five four six since he said something i'm gonna go find that document i need to check out two thousand five two zero one five four six i think i saw that back in the back oh five oh eight two zero one so that's two one oh here it is right here like i said there. easy peasy lemon squeezy Shit, it's from Tessa. She said Marianne was shoplifting and that she had us shoplifting too. I remember going in to get things for her, but she said she'd already paid for them. Tessa also accused her of child neglect. What the hell? Is there any more to that? No, but I'll keep digging. Dallas Crossing Police Department Summary Incident Report Number blah 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 Incident Code Theft uh, theft type shoplifting associated persons Tessa Vecchi Okay Person reported Marianne Ronan Narrative On January 31st 05 at approximately 12 um, Sorry 1045 hours Marianne Ronan entered uh, Veni Vidi Vecchi Owned by Thomas and Tessa Ve Vecchi, or Vecchi. Uh, Mrs. Vecchi stated that she observed Ronan browse the aisles for approximately 10 minutes while chatting distractedly with Mrs. Vecchi. Um, chatted distractedly with her. Mrs. Vecchi stated that she was behind the cash register and did not have a direct eye contact on Ronan at all times. Uh, Vecchi stated that after those 10 minutes, Ronan asked Vecchi if she had um, any organic mosquito incense in stock. Vecchi informed Ronan that she did not, but stated she believed this demand was odd due to the winter season. Ronan then left without purchasing anything else. Vecchi stated that after approximately five minutes, she walked back through the aisle where Ronan had been and discovered a missing box of detergent. Vecchi stated that she had very recently restocked the shelves and no one else had been in the store that morning. Vecchi stated that she has suspected Ronan of shoplifting uh, before in the past, notably while in the company and possibly with the aid of Ronan's two children. Becky stated that she also had reason to suspect Ronan to be guilty of child neglect. They don't eat and are exposed to all kinds of inappropriate influences. Becky believed it is possible uh, some form of abuse may be occurring in the home. Hmm. Interesting. Why didn't she just con- why didn't she just confront um, Marianne? Shit, shit, shit. Eddie's coming up the stairs. Oh, what fucking do hell. Do? What do I do? Oh, shit. Uh, stall him. Stall him. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, stay him in the bathroom. Get him into his office. Say I went for a smoke. Get him into his office. Tell him you need to talk in his office. Oh, God. Recording. Uh, running children? Jealous Crossing Police Department. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Uh, hello? I can hear you. It, it's my mom. She she fell in the water and she's not coming up. Okay, where are you now? Home. We're home. Are you alone? Where's your dad? It's just me and my sister. All right, honey, can you give me your address? 12 Cannery Road. Please, hurry. Just stay right where you are, okay? We're sending someone out to help you. Don't hang up! Okay, so that's the recording. Uh, we've read the incident report. Oh, this is a different incident report. Yeah, okay, let's go find this one. References 2005-210-195. I think that one's right here. Okay, here it is. 
Okay. Uh, incident report, verbal and physical threats. Joanna Miller. At approximately uh, 1525 hours, Marianne Ronan arrived at Joanna Miller's home to cut her hair. The two women had settled on date and time earlier that week. The appointment was arranged for 1300 hours and Miller states that she was uh, the only thing they had agreed on that day and had not agreed on any sort of payment. According to Miller's statement, Ronan arrived at Miller's home approximately 25 minutes late and looked real tired and anxious, like she was maybe on something. Shortly after arrival, Ronan began to cut Miller's hair in her kitchen. After the haircut, Ronan asked to be paid $20 in cash for her work. Miller then stated that she had only $10 and a $5 bill and asked Ronan if it was sufficient payment. Miller stated that Ronan then exploded into a fit of rage and assaulted me with insults. Miller declined to specify the insults as they were too monstrous for decent conversation. When Miller requested that Ronan uh, remove herself from Miller's home, the situation escalated and Ronan made physical threats to Miller, telling her that if she did not pay her for her work, she would take her uh, payment from Miller by taking something from her home. Miller reported no items missing. Miller stated that she then threw Ronan out of her home, locked the doors, and proceeded to call the police. When a uh, patrol came out, they noticed Miller's picket fence had been vandalized, apparently having been driven through with a vehicle. Miller stated that before Ronan had been uh, into her home, the fence had been intact and simply lovely. Weird. We're not seeing any of these parts of Marianne in any of the flashbacks that we've been seeing. That's so wild. Okay. Let's see if we can get any more information before we run out of time. <laughs> Uh, March 1st, 05, Eddie Brown. Crime report, maybe? Let's go find this one. I need to check out 05R61889. Okay, I have that one written down right here. Six. Yeah, 661. That one? Nope. Nope, not that. That. Not this one either. No. Okay. Uh, where's the damn box? Well. Oh, 61889. Uh, was there a 6-1? Yeah, there's a 6-1 right here. Here we go. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Crime report. Report of homicide. Date of occurrence on the dock. At Lakeside, victim threatened her child with a gun. Child stabbed her with a pair of scissors. Victim sub subsequently fell into the lake. Reporting employees. Blah, blah, blah. None of this is new, really. And shouldn't police reports <laughs> be straight and to the point? Red tape, man. Uh, crime summary. On March 1st, 05, around uh, 2200 hours, the victim, Marianne Ronan, 41 year old white female, exited her home and entered a garage to start loading a Rasser 31 21 9mm shotgun shortly after her child. Blank Ronan, 11 years old, entered the garage to, to display a new haircut given by sister Blank Ronan. According to witness, Miner's name redacted Ronan's state, um, Ronin statement. When she saw the child's haircut, Marianne became enraged and threatened. Blah, 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 blah. We already know all of this. Hearing the noise, um, witness name redacted Ronan also came out of the house towards the dock where she observed Ronan under threat from Marianne. Uh, defend themselves by stabbing mother with a pair of scissors. At that time, both witnesses state Marion Ronan lost consciousness, fell into the lake at 2229 Dallas Crossing. Uh, police department officer, blah blah blah, detailing incident. Nothing really new here either. On March 1st, 05, Officer Christian Holt notified his partner, blah blah blah. Detectives observed a loaded wrestler shotgun on the dock. No rounds had been discharged. They directed forensic personnel to recover items. Witness so-and-so Ronan stated that she heard screaming while she was upstairs in her bedroom. She ran down the stairs and looked over the kitchen window and saw her sibling and mother Marianne on the docks. Marianne was threatening her child with her gun, tried to run away, but Marianne threatened that she was going to shoot. According to both witnesses, she stated, I'm going to kill you. Ronan uh, then stabbed Marianne Ronan with a pair of scissors trying to escape. Marianne Ronan then fell into the water unconscious. 
I feel like we're reading the same document over and over and over again. <laughs> um, Alright, so I guess we'll go back to the computer since we haven't uh, been caught yet. Tessa's name came up. Search for her. Okay, Tessa incident? Nope. Tessa recording? Tessa March 1st? Tessa and Eddie? Tessa Ronin children? Hospital discharge. That's a new document. All right, so we're looking for 05-R68-MISC. I'm pretty sure I saw that back in the back uh, corner. References 05-R68-MISC. I think I I think it's right over here. Uh, there it is. There. Huh? Why is that here? Um, okay. Description of symptoms, pressure in the head, headache, loss of consciousness, nausea, dazed. I, patient named legal guardian Tessa Vecchi, hereby release St. Meadow Clinic from liability following the patient as per terms, blah, blah, blah. Huh. Why is that here? It's a release form, but why was Tessa in the hospital in the first place? I guess there's another incident report that we have to find. Okay. Child services. Search for that. Child service and Tessa. And Eddie. Something. Ah, okay. Audio recording. This is Officer Eddie Brown. Hello, Officer Brown. This is Simone Prue from the Office of Child Services. Hello, Mrs. Prue. I'm calling about the Ronan family. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that we will be moving forward with the case. Uh, I see. Is there anyone additional we should interview while we're in the area? Yeah, um, Samuel Kansky is a close friend of the family. Uh huh. Hmm. K A N S. K Y. Great. Your caseworker, Sandy Black, will be arriving on March 5th. She'll drop by the station first thing in the morning. Mrs. Prue, how worried should we be? Mm, I really can't say until I have a full picture of the situation. Of course. Well, have a good afternoon, Mrs. Prue. You too, sir. I just listened to Brown chatting with OCS. He really did it. He reported her. What if he was just a go-between? He might not have had a choice. We need to keep digging. Hmm. Um, is there anything else between child services and them? Okay, so I guess this fax is what we need to find. Wait, did I get the document? Child service, and it was this one, right? There, go. there we go. I guess I'll write it down since it didn't capture it. Zero five dash zero one C O M dash E B R. All right, okay. let's go find it. I need to check out zero five zero one C O M. I think that was right next to this other one that we just looked at. Pretty sure that's it. Okay, here it is. Jesus, unbelievable. Allie, Tessa called fucking social services on us, and Eddie went along with it. What? Where are you? What's going on? Okay, so it looks like, yeah, it's just a fax confirmation. But I mean, if it's reported to the police, the police have to, to get moving. move forward with it, you know? Like, they can't just brush it under the rug. They could get in trouble for that. I'm sorry, Tyler. I couldn't stop him. He's coming your way. I hope I didn't miss anything. Get out. Oh, Uncle, shit. I, we didn't mean I'm to- I'm not going to repeat myself. You're a goddamn hypocrite. I said move it. Dude, don't touch me. Hey. <laughs> Get off me! You'd rather spend the night here? Come on! I said don't fucking touch me! Go on! And consider yourselves lucky your family! Are you kidding me? Let's talk in private. Yeah, let's talk in private. I got questions. You're right. Family. And for Allison's sake, we should talk. About what? We saw our file. 
We know about social services. Why? Why did you turn your back on her? Why did Tessa? Yeah, Tessa's really the one who kind of committed the faux pas, if you will. Because, okay. I mean, if a report's filed, they have to move yeah. forward with it. You're right. We need to talk. The winter before your mother's death was hard. Devil's Crossing was snowed in for months. Most roads were closed and plain supplies were scarce. Everyone was struggling. Especially Marianne. Yeah. She was always just scraping by. And that winter left nothing to scrape up. Even if locals had found time to help her. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure your mother would have accepted. So Tessa came to you, she was struggling. Uh, she was struggling. So, she was struggling through the snowstorm of the century, and you reported her to social services? Tessa came to me and reported potential child neglect. As a sworn officer, I am required by federal law to report the allegation to OCS. Yep. Tessa stabbed her in the back. So you called child services. Yeah, I mean, not that Tessa did stab her in the back, but she caused the whole thing. A snake pretending to care to be her friend just to stab her in the back when she was down? Tessa helped out your family for years. I'm convinced her concern was real. Of course you would. We saw those townie complaints against Mary Ann Tyler. It wasn't just Tessa's word. Is that why you came over that day, before she died? You felt shitty, didn't you? That's why you broke procedure? I had to warn her that it was happening and that it wasn't looking good. An assessment worker had been assigned and started doing background checks. What else was I supposed to do? <clears throat> I thought always telling each other the truth was our number one rule. Still is, little moose. And yet you still lied. I didn't want you two putting yourselves through unnecessary hurt. But you're adults and that was your choice to make. I'm, I'm truly sorry. Thank you, Uncle. That's bullshit, Allison. Just like that, huh? I'm gonna have to side with Eddie on this one. Sorry, guys. Just like that, huh? Must be nice to have a daughter who lets you off the hook that easy. Eddie, you keep trying to point your finger at Tessa, but you have to take responsibility for your part in our mother's death. I've asked myself over and over for the past 10 years what I could have done different. I know I made a big mistake with you two here, but and you've got every right to be angry. Being a father, well, it's a pretty tough job. I've tried my best, and I'd like to try my best with you too, Tyler, if you want it. We could get there with time. No, it's not that easy. Um. I think it could take some time, but it's manageable. He's trying to do the right thing. There. But it's gonna take some time before we're a big, happy family. I respect that. It's hard work rebuilding trust. But you've got a place here whenever you need it. Oh, he put on the ring. <laughs> 
Oh, look at that face. <laughs> Group hug? Uh, no. Oh. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> That's funny. All right, I'm really gonna have to kick you out now. No rest for the wicked, huh? <laughs> I see a circle. Oh, Can yeah. I talk to them? I'm as wicked as it gets. I'll see you both later. Tyler, what's up? Uh, I want to apologize. I saw the fireweed invoice. Uh, saw the fireweed invoice. So, uh, I saw the invoice from Fireweed. When you were going through my stuff? Right. I, uh... We don't have to talk about it. Oh, uh, actually, no. I'm not gonna let you tough guy your way out of this. You didn't have to do that, but you did. And going to Fireweed was everything. So, thank you. Okay? <laughs> okay, Tyler. You're welcome. Hmm... I want to apologize. I'll see you around. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and apologize. I uh, feel like I owe you an apology. Oh yeah, what for? Breaking and entering, invasion of privacy. Maybe. Sorry. Maybe. It was messed up. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Apology accepted. Just don't ever pull that shit again. All right. I guess I'll see you around. Well, see you around then. You know where to find me. Okay. Well, that was very satisfying. Should we go? Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> this place had well, me like better than I was afraid it would. Feeling very tense. Oh, you're back at your desk. Can I interact with anything before I leave? You kids be careful out there, yeah? You kids be careful out there, yeah? That's it? Yeah. You kids be careful out there, yeah? You kids be careful out there, yeah? <laughs> it's noon, which means that by the time I drink one, it'll be afternoon. I can't be expected to enjoy my pulled pork sandwich without a cold one. Are we she has a point. Lunch tomorrow? Yeah, sure. I'll text you. Okay. I guess, uh, I guess we can take off now. Wait, can I snoopy snoop in here? Hmm? No, I guess not. <laughs> I guess, uh, I guess I asked for too much. <laughs> Let's go, Allison. Let's get out of here. Allison. What? She's mad. You feel like shit. How can you tell? Because I feel like shit. What are we gonna do about Tessa? Nothing. Look, we're not gonna do anything. That's enough, Tyler. Talk to Tessa? Why? What are you looking for? What are you expecting her to say? I thought she loved us. Really? Chief Brown, is it true? Is she? Oh my god. Children, I... Tessa. Tessa, you need to leave. Come on, kids. Everything is going to be all right, okay? You're going to be okay, I promise. Go home. You can't be here right now. Something they're not uncovering here, like, I mean, it's obvious everybody cares about about each other. Everybody's friends. Everybody wants what's good for one another. But there's there's a a central element here that they still haven't. Where is everybody uncovered? Tessa's got to be around somewhere. I think I'm hearing something. Hmm. Well, at least we know the entire world didn't vanish. But given who is here, we can't count out the rapture quite yet. <laughs> I need to take a breather. I'm going to do a bit of shopping. 
You look for Tessa, okay? On it. Okay. Actually, I kind of need a breather too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause uh, the game for just a few moments. I'm going to get some coffee. I've been kind of thinking about coffee ever since um, they talked about it and they were in the living room. Like it's, it's been actively in the back of my mind. So I think, uh, I think I'm going to run and grab some coffee and let my dog out and then, uh, I'll come back up and we'll finish the second half of the game. I think we're like right in the middle. Um, cause somebody was saying it took them four hours to get through the game, depending on how long it took them to get through all those files and stuff. So I'm thinking we're about halfway through at this point. So I will, um, I will be back shortly. Don't go anywhere. Um, yeah, see you in a little bit.